Hello programmers, welcome to your 54th chapter in your Java E tutorial series. In this episode, we'll be talking about concurrency utilities. What we'll be covering here is the basics of concurrency, the main components of the concurrency utilities, concurrency and transactions, and the jobs concurrency example, as well as another example, the task creator concurrency example. So concurrency basics. Concurrency is the concept of executing two or more tasks at the same time in parallel. This is integral in making any application seem faster than it really is. Thanks to Java EE7, enterprise developers can now safely use a concurrency utilities since the container can now take care of the instantiation of the threads and their destruction. So threads and processes. The two main concurrency concepts are processes and threads. The Java programming language and platform are primarily concerned with threads. Threads share some features with processes since both consume resources from the OS or the execution environment, but threads are much easier to create and consume so much fewer resources than a process. There are a lot of pros and cons of using concurrency in our programs, but a few problems that may arise are, for example, deadlocks, thread starvation, concurrent access, a concurrently accessing of shared resources, and situations when the program generates incorrect data. So the main components of concurrency utilities, which basically make everything together, um, are, first of all, managed executor service. A managed executor service is used by applications to execute submitted tasks asynchronously and are managed by the container. M while managed scheduled executor services, just like the managed executor service, but you can specify a whole time, a certain time to activate it. Then there's the context service. Think of this as an IOU. You can activate this as at any time as you wish later on in the program. And managed thread factories are used by applications to create managed threads and is managed by the container. This is really useful when you want to create custom threads. So concurrency and transactions. In concurrent environments, commits and rollbacks can be pretty tricky to manage. To ensure concurrency utilities, uh, concurrency utilities like um, don't like you know commit a rollback whenever things happen, they use the Java Transaction API or JTA to support the transactions done, allowing application developers to explicitly manage transaction boundaries. Here's an example: the following code snippet illustrates a runnable task that obtains a user transaction and then starts and commits a transaction while interacting with other transactional components, such as an enterprise bean and a database. Now let's take a look into the jobs concurrency example. So let's jump into our NetBeans and let's go ahead and open our project. Go into your, let's see, concurrency, go into jobs and click open project. So this example demonstrates a scenario where a RESTful service uh, expose, uh, exposes a public API, which is used to submit generic jobs for execution. These jobs are processed in the background, and each job prints a starting and a finished message at the end, beginning and end of the execution. Also, to simulate background processing, each job takes 10 seconds to execute. The token is used to differentiate the quality of service offered by the API. Users that offer a token in a service request can process multiple concurrent jobs. However, users that do not provide a token can process only one job at a time. Since every job takes 10 seconds to execute, users that provide no tokens will be able to execute only one call to the service every 10 seconds. For users that provide a token, processing will be much, much faster. The, this differentiation is made possible by the use of two different managed executor services one for each request type. So first of all, before we get into this, let's make sure that our stuff is configured. So make sure that your Glassfish server is up and running. And now go ahead and right click and go into view domain admin console. So that will pop up this page over here. And once it's done loading up, go into your resources, go into your concurrent resources, over here, expand this guy, and then go into manage executor services right over here. 
So on the Manage Executor Service page, click New. So go ahead and click this uh, to open up the new Manage Executor Services page. In the JNDI name, as you can see over here, enter MES underscore hi to create the high priority manage executor service use the following settings so go ahead and put in the thread priority as 10 you put the core size as 2 maximum pool size keep it um let's not make it so high let's make it 5 and let's make the task queue capacity as 2 go ahead and click okay now that you're done with that and on a manage executor services page over here click new again and in the jndi name field click once again mes now in this case you put low the third priority should be one making it low priority go into your core size make that one maximum pool size let's go and put it as one and our task queue capacity as one or zero because there's no queues that we're keeping in place Go ahead and click OK for that. And now let's get back to our NetBeans now that you, these guys are done. So all you got to do now is go ahead and uh, right click your jobs and click on build. Once it's done building, let's go ahead and right click it and click run to run it uh, over. So go ahead and glass your server. And now what it'll do is it will go to this localhost 8080 jobs. And in the jobs client page, enter the value one. So go ahead and put one. And uh, enter nothing in the enter a token field and then click submit job. So this will tell us that one job has been successfully submitted. And the server log, if you go back to your thing, it will say that one job has been successfully submitted and the test started is low. And then the task has been finished. You submitted a job with low priority. This means that you cannot submit another job for 10 seconds. If you try to do so, the RESTful API will return a service unavailable HTTP 503 response. And the following message will be displayed at the bottom of the page. So if we go ahead and try to do that, so let's go submit the job and submit job again. It says the job one was not submitted. And you will find that it's not submitted here as well. So let's go ahead and try to do it one more time. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is run it again. So go ahead and run it again. Run. Make sure you glass your server. Click OK. And now in this case, what we're going to do is inside, uh, inside the job uh, ID, let's put in any uh, ID we want. Let's say two and um, get a token by clicking here to so go ahead and click that and go ahead and copy this guy. All right. Put that in there. And now let's submit a job. Now we, what we can do is uh, this essentially submitted it with a high priority. This means that you can submit multiple jobs, each with a token. Um, so if we go back to your log, you'll see that it was successfully submitted and it's a high priority. Uh, this means that you can submit multiple jobs, each with a token and not face the 10 second per job restriction that the low priority submitters face. If you submit three jobs with tokens in rapid succession, messages like the following will be displayed at the bottom of the page. So what we'll see here is if we put in something like that again, submit job, submit job, submit job, submit job, and so on, you will see over here that all of them will be successfully, successfully, uh, like submitted. And you don't have to worry about, you know, like, uh, dealing with just one per, per 10 seconds. So now that we're done with the jobs concurrency example, let's take a look into the task creator concurrency example. Back in our NetBeans, let's go ahead and click open project and click on task creator. Now, what this example tells us is that it demonstrates how to use concurrency utilities in Java EE to run tasks immediately, periodically, or after a fixed delay. 
This example provides a JSF interface that enables users to submit tasks to be executed and displays information messages for each task. The example uses the manage executor service to run tasks immediately and a manage scheduled executor service to run tasks periodically or after a fixed delay. So what we'll see here is, first of all, let's go ahead and build this guy. Go ahead and expand him and click build to go ahead and build it. And now that it's done building, let's go ahead and click it, right click it and click run. Go ahead and remember that. And now what it'll do is close these guys. And you will see a page that contains a form to submit tasks, a task execution log, and a form to cancel our periodic tasks. So go ahead and select immediate task, a task type, and enter a task name. Let's say uh, Viprov, and click on submit. So this will tell us that task Viprov is started and finished. You can set the delay time, let's say to, let's say delay to three seconds. And let's call this task V, submit that again. And after three seconds, it will now say that it started and finished. Now what we can do is we can set it to be per periodic. So every eight seconds, it will do, let's say task A. You can submit that. And now that it's started to run, it goes ahead and runs it. And after eight seconds, it will start starting it and finish it again. As you can see, the second one started and finished again. You can go ahead and cancel the task if you don't want to have it anymore. Go ahead and clean the log and cancel it. And that wraps it up for this tutorial, everybody. I hope you learned a lot about our concurrency utilities and how it helps out in Java EE. In the next tutorial, we'll be taking a look into a few case studies, and then that will wrap it up for this whole series. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.